Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm gonna to be blending with colored pencil. And these are Prismacolors that I'm gonna be using. And this is for the Mama Elephant Stampede for their new release called Christmas Spirit. And they sent me this stamp set and I knew I wanted to do it in colored pencil because these little guys are really cute and they're gonna be great to color with my pencils. I masked the living daylights out of these stamps so I could use them all in creating a little tree with all of the stamps in one image. And then I scanned it and printed out four of them for myself. If you do this kind of thing, it's for your use only. Please never share any images like this. That would be illegal and you don't wanna do that. This is my case for my Prismacolors and I just invested in the full set recently and had to get some storage for them because the box they come in is really unwieldy to use. So I got these two cases. One carries most of the colors and then this one is for my neutrals and they both have these cute little snaps that hold the zipper in place and that works pretty well for me so far. And this is my new colored pencil sharpener. This is one that I got because it has an auto stop. And for me, a sharp point and an auto stop are both really important. And a sharp long point, which this one does pretty well, I've been looking for a sharpener for a long time. The Prismacolor pencils come with this stubby point on the left, and the ones on the right are from the new Bow Stitch one that I've got, and they make me happy because I want to show you the difference between what happens with using the stubby point versus the sharp point. Now there are plenty of colored pencil artists, and I've seen them on YouTube, and they all say, oh yeah, that's the, the kind of point I love. I love the stubby point or they get a pencil sharpener that gives them the stubby point or whatever and that makes me crazy because of my technique and I'm going to show you what that is here. You can see that I have like sketchy lines and that's what happens when I use the stubby point because I need a really sharp point to get into the paper texture and I go back and forth in different directions kind of in little circles all different kinds of different ways to try to I guess negate the paper texture a little bit. This is the Nina 80 pound cardstock that I normally use for my Copics and it works great for this too. When I'm doing my fine art illustrations I often use a really nice Bristol that has a little more tooth to it, it's a little softer and it takes the color even better than this but this works great for cards. The technique I'm using here is going to take a while to do and it's going to look amazing by the time it's all done because I really liked how it came out. But this is also not as much time as I would spend if I were doing a finished illustration. And I'll be sharing more of that eventually, doing more of my finished work, uh, my fine art type of work, but I will also link you in the description to my illustrations page so you can see more stuff that I've done with colored pencils. Layering the color on as lightly as I do allows me to do this, which is to take that reddish color that came out a little too pink for me for this, the flesh tone and add some yellow to it. And I'm adding just a very, very, very light coat of it. But since I haven't built up a waxy texture, I have the ability to add in that yellow. If you go in really heavily with your pencils, you're gonna have a waxy surface and not be able to make any adjustments. So I can make adjustments both for tone and for depth of color, for shadows, for all different kinds of things if I keep the touch really light. When I do that with my really sharp pencil, it makes a huge difference. So let's look at the same difference from above. So I wanted to take a different look at it. And this is another one of the pencils that has the stubby point and it ends up with just lines. It's really hard to get in between those lines with the stubby point. And if your colored pencils look like this when you color with them, for me, that's why. And that's why a lot of people use Gamsol or baby oil to do the blending because they don't have this sharp point to make the, those pencil lines go away. And this is how beautiful you can get in there with the very, very sharp point. Now there's an even sharper point, a longer point. Uh, I shouldn't say sharper because I think the end is just as sharp. But the longer points in previous videos that I've done have been with my Panasonic pencil sharpener, which I think I still love a little bit better than this one, just because it gives me the longer point so I can stay a little further away from my artwork and really get that pencil nib in there. But I think it's just perception. I think I'm just used to having the longer point because my Panasonic is no longer being made. 
and it's like $300 on Amazon, so it's a little on the crazy side since it is so rare, but they don't make it. So I've been looking for and purchasing a bajillion pencil sharpeners so I could find one that both did a very sharp point that I, I liked, as well as has that auto stop. Because a lot of color pencil sharpeners, or even just regular pencil sharpeners, um, I don't think there's a difference between colored and non-colored pencil sharpeners. The, uh, the sharpeners don't stop automatically, so you have to pull your pencil out when you think it's sharp, and then put it back in, and then pull it back out. And I bought so many of them, and I just put the pencil in, and I wanted to see how long until it decided to stop. And there were some that were nubs. The, it ate the entire pencil, and I sacrificed them to the god of trying to find the right pencil sharpener. But you can see here I can get layering with a second green and get a little bit of dimension going. I'm not going for massive dimension in this image because it's very cartoony and I wanted to keep it light and cartoony but just give it a very slight depth around each one of the shapes. And this really sharp pencil really helps. I just wish Panasonic still made that one because it was really awesome. And I bought two of them when I was in college because I was afraid I wouldn't find it again and I'm glad I did because I, you know, you get hooked on a, a supply that you've used for a long time and it's really hard to let it go. But I did do a side-by-side -side and the, the pencils actually color the same, no matter which pencil, which pencil sharpener they've been sharpened in. And here is the flesh one again. And we'll look at this one from above. So you can see the, the way that the, the pinkish color goes on. So it ends up being a little pinker than I wanted, but since I know I can have the room, I have the, the room on the paper, meaning I have a soft enough touch that I'm going to be able to add another color to it and another three colors to it or another five colors to it. If I'm coloring a skin tone in one of my fine art pieces, that sucker's probably going to have 15 or 20 colors minimum because I really love the way that color pencil layers. And don't worry, I am going to get to her other ear in just a moment here. I learned this color pencil technique from my professor in college. Her name was Gay Holland, and she illustrated children's books using this technique, and she was even slower than me. So I was like Little Miss Speedy next to her, but she got way better results than I ever did, but I did not have the patience to do what she did. A lot of the illustrations that you'll see on my illustrations page, those things would take a month, a month and a half. They took forever and ever and ever, which is why I do cards now, because cards are much smaller, but I do want to get back to doing some of that type of illustration work and figure out what I have time to do because it just takes me a long time to do this much detail and this much pencil layering. But it's fun to be able to do it on cards and be able to have a smaller format to use them in the way that I love to use them. So I'm adding another layer of the pink on top of the yellow and just building a small amount of dimension around the face and smoothing out a couple areas. I go back and forth a lot when I, I do this, especially on my finished fine, fine art illustrations, because those, I'll, I'll just keep working at them and working at them. I take a little eraser and I'll, I'll go in and just take out one little dot of color with a kneaded eraser and one little teeny tiny spot I'll flick off with an X-Acto knife or a, a fingertip knife. And there's just an immense amount of detail that I get into when I really get into it. So I added some, uh, some shadow here with a purple and I went for more of a reddish purple instead of a bluish purple like I normally have done on my Copic work simply because these are really playful images and they're not going to be trying to look like they're real so I wasn't trying to make my shadows look realistic because this is not a color you would see on any person for real. I have that little line on her cheek there so I went in with the pinkish color instead of going back in with the dark color and I could also go in with an eraser and try to lighten that line and then build the color up around it but again this is a card so I'm trying not to be too crazy about the detail and get too nuts about it. This entire image took about an hour to finish so it's um, it's definitely something that's not for the faint at heart if you don't like to spend hours on your cards. However, if you think about some of the techniques and stamping and all sorts of things that folks do, an hour is really not out of the norm for a lot of cards. There's a lot that will take us an hour. And especially if you get all the stamping done, 
and have them printed out for yourself, then you can just sit and color and enjoy that portion of it when you have time to do it. But remember, don't share any digital images you ever make of any stamps with other people. I see people doing that and it is illegal. It really harms the industry when you do that. So even though I did that here for myself, I just wanted to put that reminder out there in case anybody's got any big ideas from seeing me scan my work and be able to use it for multiple cards. But the masking on this, as you can tell, is a little on the cray cray side. When I actually did this, there were some of the images that weren't complete because I, I set my mask down wrong or there were places where it went over. So I went in before I scanned it with a black pen and I filled in any areas that didn't work. And I also took a white pen and filled in or wiped out any areas that went over the edges and stuff so that I could have a really good clean image for printing out for my cards. So that is one benefit to being able to scan it and do something else with it. So then I wanted to add some gold elements to the card. So I'm starting to, um, by the way, you may have noticed I'm speeding up now because we'll never get through this if we don't. And I'm adding some golden hair. And what I find is that once I add my shading to this, I can go in with, and, and you see me doing a little repair with my eraser and my knife. Um, I can go in with a brown pencil and add a more waxy line for the hair and add a little more detail to it since the under undercoats, all the other colors, are so soft. It allows me that freedom to have that space to do it. So here I'm adding all of the black elements and those are all being colored in uh, charcoal gray first. There are both warm and cool grays in the Prismacolor collection and I find they both work just as well, one as well as the other, so I don't stress about that too much, just like I do with my Copics. I use both of them kind of interchangeably depending on what the project is that I'm doing. And then I'll finish out the rest of the coloring on this. And before I get to the end, I want to remind you that this is part of the Mama Elephant blog hop stampede. So three days worth of mini blog hops that you can get to using the link in the description down below to go to my blog and see all of that fun information. I also have all of the supplies used, the pencils, the cases, the sharpener, all the, the good stuff um, is in the description as well as on my blog. And the list of colors that I've used here will also be on the blog. I didn't have it handy when I was doing this voiceover and since I was traveling, I kind of figured, well, I'll just put that list in the blog post later. So there you have it um, if you need the exact color list. However, use the colors that you have. You don't need to use exactly the colors that somebody on YouTube posts, not required. But here's the simple front that I came up with. I just took a die from Avery L, the dotted pierced rectangles, and popped it on some dimensional adhesive. And I put the sentiment on the inside, the Merry Christmas from the stamp set. Came out really cute and super simple and fun. And here are a couple other pencil videos if you're interested in seeing them. These both use the other sharpener, so you'll see the longer point of that, but they both color the same. Check out all the links in the doobly-doo, and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.